but Cindy is not done yet. I can't remember another time when a new member started their blue badge term by presenting their program, but that's what's happening today. I had the great good fortune of meeting Cindy for coffee as part of her orientation to Boulder Rotary, and I discovered that she has another passion besides mental health. She is passionate about the sport of dog agility, and I learned that she both raises and trains dogs and competes at the highest levels. She was eager to share pictures of her newest puppy, a Nederlander Quaker Hunje, um, brought over by plane from the Netherlands. I've been looking forward to hearing what she has to share about this sport and about her belief that all our dogs can do more than we know. So thank you all. Uh, it's a pleasure to get to talk to you about something I love. And before I start the time clock, I have a question. How many of you are dog lovers and owners? Oh. And how many of you who have dogs and are owners have ever competed in a dog sport? Oh. Uh, so how many of you are cat owners lovers and have nothing to do with dogs? <laughs> and how many of you are here simply because there's no better place to be for a Friday lunch? <laughs> OK, uh, two disclaimers. One, I am not a dog trainer. So if you are here thinking I can help you answer questions about why Fido's digging in the lawn, or Fifi's scratching at the door, or your dog's doing what my puppy's now doing, which is grabbing the roll of toilet paper and running it through the house, having a blast, I don't have answers to that. I've got my own problems. Um, my other disclaimer is the world of dog sports is huge, and I only have 20 minutes, so I um, have a lot to share. And it's a very tip of the iceberg. So uh, we're kind of going to rush at the end through some of the sports and activities uh, that you can do. But I'm going to focus mainly on um, the world of dog sports uh, from AKC's perspective. So people always ask me, Cindy, how in the world did you get involved in this? And uh, make a long story very short, all my life I've had dogs. I had Boston Terriers when I was a kid. Uh, a poodle, St. Bernard, a couple more poodles, a beagle, an Akita, a Belgian Malinois, a Siberian Husky, seven Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, and now I have four Nederlandes Quaker Hunchies. And all my life I thought I was a pretty good dog mom. We paid, played fetch, we went on walks, we went on long hikes. Uh, I thought, hey, this is really fun. Then I went to a friend's house. I was living in Eagle at the time, and I went to a friend's house up in Vail for dinner. And that dinner changed my entire world, just like that. She had just gotten a little Westie, a little Westie named Mackenzie, the cutest little dog. And I had just gotten a little Cavalier whose name was Daisy. So during dinner, uh, her name was Mary, my friend. She said, look what I've taught Mackenzie can do. He can jump through a hula hoop. Well. I'm somewhat competitive. And I said, hmm, well, I'm going home and see if I can teach little Daisy to do that. Sure enough, five minutes later, Daisy's jumping through my arms. So went to the, my vet shortly thereafter and said, Dr. Jones, I'm so excited. Daisy's such a talented little girl. And she said, well, Cindy, you know, a bunch of my other clients have been talking about maybe getting involved in dog agility. She said, are you interested? And I said, I have no clue what that means, but sure enough. So uh, this small group got together over a cup of coffee. Maybe it was a beer. Maybe it was two beers. But we all decided we'd give it a try. So I w had some property, and I said, OK, I'll donate. Or allow, let's build a little course, agility training area down on my land. We f fenced off a 50 by 50 area. Little did we know it should have been 100 by 100. So a quarter of the size it should have been. Some of the guys decided they would build equipment. Well, we didn't have internet back then, so I have no idea how they figured out what to put together. But they did a pretty good job, and pretty soon we had to find an instructor. Found somebody that lived up in Avon, and she dabbled in agility. So 
good enough, she came down pretty soon. We were <clears throat> practicing agility in my, basically my backyard. Well, by the end of summer, I thought, oh, I've got it. So we know what we're doing. So Daisy and I came down to the front range, uh, went to our first agility trial at some barn out on the other side of I-25. I, I have no idea where it was. I walked in with Daisy on my leash, had no clue what I was doing, what I was supposed to happen next, kind of figured out what was going on, got up to the start line with Daisy, put her in a start, ready, 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 go. And she jumped over the first jump, and I jumped over the jump right behind her. And that was our leap into the world of dog sports. <laughs> Next. So there are numerous organizations in this country and internationally that are involved in, in dog sports. This country uh, is the American Kennel Club. It's been around a long time. And their premier event is a Westminster dog show. How many of you watched that this week? Yeah, it was pretty cool. A little um, Border Pap won the agility and a little Poodle uh, won the confirmation. Great dogs. So in the world of AKC, there are a number of titling events. There are 17 titling events. Um, and what does that mean? These are activities, dog events, that have specific performance criteria. So as you get better, as you and your teammate get learn your skills, you go from beginner to intermediate to advanced, maybe to excellent, uh, and, and on up the line. And it's all based uh, the better you get, the more experience you get, the harder it becomes. So um, I, I want to talk mainly about my, how I started with agility. Um, so in the wonderful world of agility, it's all about, wait, Tyler? Tyler, this is, this is the wrong video. <laughs> I'm talking about dog sports. So could I, have the, oh, could I have the next video? Thank you. Whew. So agility is a sport, uh, team sport. It's um, completing an obstacle course. Uh, there are same obstacles in, on every course, but they're never in the same pattern. So I've been doing agility for 20 some years, and I've never, ever seen the same course. Um, how it works is you arrive at the, at the uh, venue, you walk in, you get a map, and you have eight minutes to walk the course that you're going to run and figure out how you're going to handle it. And that requires different skills, depends upon you and your relationship with the dog, um, how I handle my dog and how somebody else would handle theirs, totally, completely different. So this is Cindy and Ari uh, last fall at an agility trial. First thing I do is put him in a down. Now Ari has been to, he's been the national AKC champion in Quaker Hunji for four years. So we're a pretty good team. First thing I do is do a long lead out because he's fast and I'm slow. So I get a head start. Off we go, we go over a couple jumps, up over the A-frame, have to hit the yellow contact zone over another jump, out to the tunnel. Up over the dog walk, we go kind of slow because he has a problem. He usually jumps over the yellow at the end. Um, then I send him over out to the weave poles. We've got great distance getting through all 12 of them. I do a front cross over a couple more jumps to the table. He has to go in a down. He has to stay in that down for five seconds, which actually is really hard for a dog that's having fun. The judge says go, we go back. He goes over four jumps way out, he makes a hard left turn up over the teeter, has to go to the bottom, over a jump, over the tire, and we're done. So that's, that's what we do for fun. So some of you may say, oh, that's too hard for me. I'd never want to do that. I'm way too old. Well, here's Helen Phillips. Helen Phillips is a dear friend of mine. She's 91 years old, and she runs a border collie whose name is Bonus. This is Helen and Bonus about three weeks ago. Saturday at the
2926. Helena and bonus. She's 91 years old. So Ari in my career, Ari's 11 now, and it's time for him to retire. So we've spent the last year or so trying to find something else we could do as a team that we enjoy as much as agility. And we found it. It's called scent work, and you might consider it a game of hide and go seek. Um, in this, we're at the beginner level, but how it works is you get a little odor. There's an odor box like this that's hidden someplace on a, on a course. It could be an interior course, exterior course, anyway, it goes on. Um, and this is so Cindy, this is Cindy and Ari trying to find an odor on this porch you're gonna see. Um, it's hidden somewhere, I don't know where it is, and it's his job to find it as fast as he can. This is a timed event, and I think it's so much fun. It's so much fun to watch the dogs solve the problem of literally hide and go seek where or oh, where is the odor going to be. So he sniffs around a little bit. It's amazing how they you'll see him finally find the edge of the odor. He can't find it down here. So he says, well, maybe it's down at the other end of this. So he, we go down to the end. He says, nope, I can't find it, Mom. We turn around. He says, ah, I've got it. So he comes back. He backtracks. He says, he's on the odor. You can see how he's working it. He comes back to the edge of the box. And he turns around. And he yeah. barks. Yes. And I call alert, and we, we actually won that. We were the fastest pair to solve that problem on that day. So that's scent work. The other um, sport I've recently taken up is um, rally, and I would call it Simon Says. So on the rally course, there are a number of signs. Each of those signs has a different uh, information, instructions about what to do with the sign. So here's Cindy and my uh, two and a half year old puppy. Uh, we're doing a rally. This is a practice. So we get to the sign three steps back, except we, there's one step. Next is two steps and three steps. Oh, I only did two steps. I flunked as my instructor points out to me. I said, okay, let's practice. So we go on. Down here we make a hard left turn. She does that very nicely. We're beginners, so she's still on a leash. Uh, it has to be a loose leash. And we're just developing our teamwork as she um, gets better. Ultimately, as we go to the next level, the leash will come off and we'll be doing all these exercises off leash. Here you see I had to do a quick left side. We come down here, we stop. Uh, she has to stay while I walk around her. Our next obstacle is a uh, spiral. We have to go around three cones, then two cones, and then one cone. And you'll see her jump. She's going, Cindy, hurry up. I want to get going. And I said, okay, I know. So that's uh, Cindy and Stormy doing a little rally. So the sport that you might be most familiar with is confirmation. I don't do confirmation, and I won't go into the reasons why, but there are some. Uh, but this is my very, very dear friend, Matt Martha Lagaschulte, and her uh, Sammy Ed at, at a recent um, uh, confirmation trial. The judge is inspecting the dog um, for her structure. She's a very, very, very uh, good Sammy Ed. Martha herself is a judge, goes around, travels around the country. And I don't know how dogs could, or judges could possibly judge this breed because they all look alike. They're all fluffy, big, white dogs. But the judges know what they're doing, and Martha and Britta are a wonderful team, and I think they win this class. Yes. 
So another one you may be familiar with is um, a sport of ob obedience. And this is what I would consider a precision drill team. This is um, Kathy Parker and her dog Trip. Uh, they were in the top 20 in the country at the National Obedience Championship, AKC's National Championship, about three or four years ago. And their skills, their precision is incredible. So that was their retrieve. And the next video is of um, a figure eight. And just watch the beauty of the precision of this team. Trip is just tucked into the seam of her pants. So if none of these activities kind of excite you, you might be liking duck diving. <laughs> this is a competitive event. Seven feet that dog jumped. So, um, so people ask me, what else can dogs do? If none of these activities excite you, there's a lot of other things you can do. Um, therapy dogs, Airport DI has a tremendous comfort dog program. They're breed specific programs. I don't have time to even begin to talk about those, but there's a lot of of things you can do. A hospital visits, etc. So. What do you need to get involved in dog sports? Five things. A dog. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, a dog who loves you and you love that dog. And that's important, the dog's gotta love you. Um, you gotta have a lot of time to learn. And I should have put in there a lot of time to practice. Um, and then of course you have to have some bucks. Uh, the more you travel, the more you train, the more it costs. So um, people always ask me, and for the sake of time, I won't dwell on this. Um, people say, what's your dog breed? People struggle with the name. It's a Nederlandes Koiker Hanji. Uh, translated, it means a Dutch duck dog. They were uh, bred in Europe. They're a very old uh, bred in, in the Netherlands. Um, bred to stand on the banks of the canals. And as the canals got narrower, and they would use their fluffy tails. And as the canals got narrower and narrower, the ducks would kind of follow them down the canals to get to the end of the canals. And the hunters, trappers would drop big nets over them. And they could, they could collect a lot of duck that way. Much more effective in the 15th and 16th century than trying to use a gun. So that's the history of the Nederlandes Quaker Hunji. Um, they're great dogs. Um, this is my four pack including my six-month-old puppy that, uh, as long as I was just, I imported from Finland uh, in January. Um, they're not very well known here in this country. There are about 2,000 of them. Um, I've got four of that 2,000. Um, they haven't been well known in this country until very recently. Who knows who this is? Who knows who this is? Who? Yeah, Shohai Otani. This is Shohai Otani. He is the highest paid baseball player in this country. He has a $700 million contract with Los Angeles Dodgers. And when he went to his press conference uh, last fall, he took his Nader Landes Koiker Hanji, whose name is Decoy, who is actually related in a long family tree to my dog, Ari. So you can see a lot more Nader Landes Quaker Hunjis, and now you all know how to pronounce it. So with that said, what questions do you all have? Oh, go ahead. Oh, Zoom. 
Uh, I know that in show dogs, a, uh, a dog that has been spayed is not allowed to participate. Uh, uh, are, are dogs that have been fixed uh, allowed to participate in, in the sports that you discussed? Yeah, the only uh, sport uh, requirement is confirmation. They have to be intact to compete in confirmation. Thank you. Do you reward Ari with um, uh, treats or uh, whispered praise? And uh, in other words, uh, uh, there are various dog trainers. Some say don't use treats when you're training a dog. Get them to respond to you and then give them praise. I'm wondering what you use. Also, um, uh, another short question is where do you get those uh, um, odor boxes or did you make it yourself? Online. Online. Great. Online. What can't you get online? <laughs> okay. And, and the, then I have a, a comment. Uh, the current issue of the New Yorker has a wonderful article on the Westminster Dog Show. Anybody? So to answer your question yes. about tugging or, or treats, uh, it's up to the handler and the dog. I use both. Uh, depends upon what I'm training. If I want my dogs to stay in a sense of arousal, if we're working on something that requires speed, I use a tug toy as a reward because we can play when we're done. If it's three jumps and we're going to tug. If it's something that requires, I'm training a very specific skill uh, that takes a little, it's a little harder to train, I will use treats. So it depends on what I'm trying to do. Thanks. This is so fun. Um, my 90 pound Bernadoodle doesn't listen to me and I know you can't tell him to listen to me, but it's very clear that your dogs listen uh, at a level that most of us who are dog owners probably cannot really conceive of. <laughs> and I'm wondering what is the training procedure to get a dog to that level of obedience because it, it feels foreign to me. <laughs> so let me say it's not even obedience it's it's the relationship you establish over time i start all my dogs off even them as puppies just paying attention to me just playing games whether it's treating whether it's doing targeting whether it's doing nose work and i mean work on it constantly um so it's just something you learn to do. And yes, they're good at it, but we've worked really hard at it. It's not something you can practice for five minutes every day and expect them to have that kind of focus. So they, after the time I put into them, they better pay attention to me. Do we have any? Oh. So Cindy, I was really interested when uh, you talked about getting to the course that you've never seen before, and you have eight minutes to figure it out. Does the dog get to see the course? No. Or you? And then how does the dog know which way to go? How you're just how that's my that... job. <laughs> but what what kind of signals are you giving to to so, let the dog? There are a lot of a lot of things that probably aren't obvious, but we work really hard on. There are a number of different ways that you communicate with your dog on a course. Um, the first is uh, the way your body's turning. That includes your feet, your knees, your shoulders, your head. Uh, any of you who ski know, you know, where you look is probably where you're going to go. Uh, where your arms are, uh, their verbal commands. Uh, for a long time, they said, don't use verbal commands. Now people, particularly doing some of this distance work, uh, I can tell Ari to go weave, and he could. if I stood here and told him to weave back where the buffet line is, he would know what to do. So you build all those skills over time, and it's a very complex training system. Hands, knees, arms, feet. Thanks. Yes, uh, I know you say you don't do training, but my oldest daughter has a canine learning center in Fort Collins. Would you give your talk to a group of people up in Fort Collins? Are you available to do traveling and talking? <laughs> sure, it's something I love. Okay. And if they give me more time, I'll talk more. Okay. Uh, 
and Cindy, I've told you I'm not a dog person, but my, uh, my sister-in-law is, like you, very active. And we've been to several of the shows. I don't think you've given a good sense for how big some of those shows are. Could you describe so what some of these are? Big in the sense of size of the rings or? No, size of, of people, number of people that attend and dogs. Oh, and to yeah. come to compete? Yeah. Well, we go to the AKC National Championship um there are about 2500 dogs entered in that trial it takes six rings are going at a time uh over the course of uh four days so you see a lot of dogs and it takes from 7 a.m in the morning till seven or eight at night to go through let all the dogs have a turn so it, it can be big i think we have time for one more question Hey, Cindy. So all of us, I've, by the show of hands, we have a ton of dog owners here. So I'm interested in the nutrition side in terms of we're all feeding our dogs and you've got to keep those dogs healthy. So what's the secret in terms of food or any supplements? It's a good question. And I am not a nutritionist. So uh, I just go what works for my dogs. Uh, I feed them uh, a freeze-dried dog food called Honest Kitchen in the morning. I have a very um, a, a vet-recommended canine dog food for them at, for their lunch, and then I give them a bedtime snack uh, of pumpkin and ground turkey because it's good for them. And supplements, you can spend a lot of money on supplements. I don't buy a lot of supplements unless my vet recommends it. All right, Cindy? I'm the, I'm the, it's time to stop the program person, but I just want to say how lovely it was to have you talk today and to get a sense of the work that you're doing with your dogs. It was, it was wonderful. I'm just, I'm blown away by the relationship and we, um, we are the softest dog parents in Boulder, which is saying <laughs> something pretty strong. Uh, and we have a great relationship. So our dogs would not do that. So it's just, it's remarkable. And there are a lot of people in the room. Um, Janet does work uh, with her beautiful dog, Phoebe, um, in schools and in a uh, retirement dog. home where they go and give comfort. It's just, a, it's such a huge, deal to have a dog or a cat, I love cats too, in your home. So thank you for sharing this with us. As you know, Boulder Rotary gives 100 doses of polio vaccine in the name of all of our speakers every year. We are really pleased to have you. Thank you so much and congratulations on being a Blue Batch.